So there's a lot of questions out there about powder coat and Cerakote, which is better, how to apply it, and where to use it. So I'm gonna take two parts, prepare them identically, bring you through the process of each type of coating, and then do a redneck durability test using real world situations. There are some similarities. Powder coat and Cerakote are applied in much of the same way, but as you can imagine, powder coat comes in a powder form and Cerakote is in a liquid form. And the end result, generally powder coating is three to four times thicker than Cerakote. And that's a big advantage of Cerakote. There is not as much prep work involved since most of the time you don't need to worry about masking off threads or mating surfaces where you can't have a thick finish, such as the case with powder coat. But it's the end result that really matters, and that's what we're gonna test out today. All right, I've got two of the same exact clutch levers here, and they've got these plastic plugs on the end. I'll need to pull them out since they'll get destroyed in the oven. So stay if I were to put these levers to use. With powder coating, I would wanna mask off this surface and plug the hole too, since the powder buildup would be too thick for the lever to be usable. However, with Cerakote, I would not need to do any masking. The first step with the prep process is to clean these levers up with degreaser, followed up with an acetone soak for 30 minutes. After the 30 minute soak, comes an abrasive blast with aluminum oxide media. Now I'm gonna blow the levers off with the air compressor. And from start to finish, I'll be wearing a set of powder free gloves whenever I'm handling the parts. So why soak the parts in acetone before sandblasting and not the other way around? Well, I wonder the same thing, but that is the exact process recommended by Cerakote and many powder coat and Cerakote suppliers too. From what I gather, sandblasting is the best way of cleaning apart, provided you have a clean abrasive. And soaking apart acetone does leave a residue. So with that in mind, I guess it does make some sense. The next step in the process is to hang the parts from the rack. That way I can run them through the oven for a preheat at 300 degrees for a full hour. This will ensure there's no residue or anything left behind. Just pull the levers out of the oven and I'm gonna spray one out with powder first. All right, the powder coating gun I'll be using is a hot coat sold by Eastwood. So it's a pretty simple setup. Just plugs into power and then you have compressed air right here. The ground clips onto the part and then the powder container just screws on right here. The powder I'll be using is a hot coat. It looks like it's a gloss black. I'll show you what this powder looks like. Dump out a little bit of it here. So it's pretty much like any powder you'd see. Think of it as paint without the solvent. I've got the gun plugged in and all ready to go. Got power, air, just need to clip the ground of the part and I'll be ready to spray. Let me give you a little demonstration of exactly what this looks like. So you can see just powder flowing out of the end of the gun here. So when I have the clip grounded to the part, the part will actually be electrically charged and the part and the powder will be attracted to each other. So the powder will just stick right to the surface. And of course, with any powder or painting process, you wanna wear a respirator. After the powder has been sprayed out, it's gonna have a really flat or chalky finish to it. Now I'm gonna place the part in the oven at 400 degrees and check it every five minutes to see if that powder has flowed out. It's been a couple minutes. I'm gonna take a look at the lever. Yep, looks like that powder flowed out. So now I'm gonna let it cure for another 20 minutes at the same temperature. The 20 minutes is up. I'm just gonna pull the lever out of the oven and let it cool down. It is definitely glossy, all right. Looks pretty good though. Now it's on to Cerakoting the other lever. The process for spraying Cerakote is pretty similar, except I'll be using a liquid and a different style gun. 
For this lever, I'll be going with a tungsten color. For you guys that saw my last couple Cerakoten videos, I was using an airbrush, but that thing ended up being a hunk of crap, so I picked up this touch-up gun. I've been playing around with it for a little bit, and it seems to work a lot better. Let's put it to the test. So to mix up the Cerakote, I've got the color and a catalyst, and I'll be mixing these at a 12 to 1 ratio in the cylinder here. Another thing that's different this time around is I'll be using these little eyedroppers and that should help get the correct ratio from color to Cerakote. Guns all filled up with Cerakote, plugged in, made a few test runs, and now it is time to spray out the lever. Man, that gun sprayed out the Cerakote so much better. Really glad I bought it. So I've had the lever sitting for a solid 15 minutes after spraying. Now it is time to toss it in the oven and cure it at 300 degrees for an hour. The lever is all done with the curing process, and as soon as this thing cools off, I'll check back in with you guys. All right, both levers are all finished up, and as far as the finish goes, the powder coat was a high gloss, so of course it's gonna be smooth, and the Cerakote is a little bit rougher. It's got some texture to it. So most Cerakote comes in a semi-gloss or satin finish. So the thing with powder coat is there's definitely a lot more options out there for color and finish, and with Cerakote, most of your options are gonna be in the black, gray, white, brown kind of range. They don't really have much for the red, blue, orange, yellow kind of thing. All right, let's see how these finishes hold up to some abuse. One more thing, it usually takes about four or five days for the coating to fully cure, so I'm gonna give it a few days before I start hammering on them. I'll touch base with you guys then. While we're waiting on that powder coat and Cerakote to fully cure, I've got some exciting news for you guys. The new hats and shirts that I've been working on are now available over on PrimeMX.com. Absolutely in love with this hat. Fits really good. Got mesh on the back, snap back. Great all around hat. And the shirt is top notch as well. Fits awesome. Super soft material. You will not be disappointed one bit. So head over to PrimeMX.com to grab yours. They will not be around for long, trust me. So it's a few days later, and I'm sure the coating is plenty cured by now. I'm gonna do some durability testing on these pieces. So the first thing we'd encounter with a part like this is roost and rocks hitting the part. So I'm gonna test that out right now. There really is no perfect way to accurately and equally test this, and like I said, this is gonna be a little bit redneck. So I've got a rock in the vise, and I'm gonna tap each lever against the rock and see how the coatings hold up. I'm gonna start with the powder coated lever first. I whacked the lever pretty hard against the rock a few times and as you can see, we've got a few chips in the powder coating. Not too bad though. On to the Cerakoted lever now. I gave this one a couple solid whacks and ended up with a few chips, but it isn't quite as bad as the powder coating. I would say the Cerakote held up better in this situation. Another situation that could happen with a lever is you tip the bike over and you scrape up the end of the lever on a rock or something. So I'm gonna test that out right now by just scraping each lever against the rock. Obviously that rock is pretty dang rough. It's like five grit sandpaper, but it wore through the powder coating fairly quick. Now let's see how the Cerakoted lever handles it. I would say they're pretty dang equal on that one. I try to rub each lever on the rock for about the same amount of time. All right, this test is gonna be somewhat similar to the last one, except I'll be using a Scotch-Brite wheel on the buffer. I'm just gonna hold each lever to the wheel for two seconds and see how quickly the finish wears through. I kind of figured this would be the outcome, since powder coat is generally three to four times thicker than Cerakote. 
Next up is sandblasting. And again, I'm gonna blast on each part for two seconds. Now it was kind of tough to give an equal blast to each lever, but I would give the slight edge to powder coating simply because it's a thicker finish. The next one is pretty simple. Just gonna scrape a razor blade against each lever. Now this one was kind of interesting. As you can see, the powder coat went all the way through to the aluminum, but the Cerakote still has some coating left over. The final test is kind of pointless, unless you want to see how well your bike would hold up in a fire, but I figured it'd be fun to try out regardless. Actually, just one more test. <laughs> Looks like powder coating held up better on that one and I somehow didn't kill myself in the process. That was kind of stupid. Now, if I were to do a legit test, I would also include corrosion testing and sunlight exposure, but those are just too involved. Overall, I would say the two finishes are pretty equivalent for durability, many times stronger than spray paint, but neither would hold a candle to hard anodizing. So on the debate of powder coat versus Cerakote, it really boils down to what kind of part you're coating and what color you're gonna go with. With powder coating, you have so many options for color and types of finish. Anything from flat to high gloss, textured, translucent, you name it, powder coating has it. Cerakote, not quite as much. Now for the type of part you're gonna be coating, this is what's gonna make the biggest difference here. If you have a part that has a thickness tolerance or a lot of areas that need masking off, I personally would go with Cerakote in most cases. For example, the triple clamps here are Cerakoted and I didn't need to mask anything off. If I would have powder coated them, there would have been a lip here and I don't think that would have looked very good. And then coming over to the front wheel here, the hub is powder coated with a translucent red. So there is a lip right here where the brake rotor sits. I don't think it looks very clean and I would have avoided that with Cerakote. But then again, I wouldn't have been able to achieve this type of finish with Cerakoting. You guys are probably confused as heck right now. So personally, I would go with Cerakote in most cases, simply because it's a cleaner look and there's less prep work involved. But then again, it is more expensive than powder coat. In the scenario where I want to use a translucent or a candy type finish, then I would go with powder coating. And as far as coating engine covers and frames, anything you put on there is going to wear through unless it is hard anodizing which is why I've gone away from coating my engine covers, especially on a two-stroke. You're shifting so much, it's gonna wear through pretty quickly. All right, so you wanna have some powder coating or Cerakoting done, but where do you go? With powder coating, it's so popular, it's pretty easy to find a good shop locally, but with Cerakote, it's a little more difficult. Luckily, I know a guy that's super good, especially within the motorcycle industry. Trick Engineering is the place to go. I'll link their website down below. I'm gonna wrap up the video right here. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to the videos, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And one more thing, head over to primemx.com to grab your hat and t-shirt while they're still available. Thank you for watching.